Hey, what's going on on Facebook and YouTube? Hi. God bless you all. We're going to read out of Isaiah 14 a little bit. Kathy and I are driving through the wilderness. Yes. Our favorite place to be. Yeah. It's nice out here. Speed limit is 80, actually. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool. So you only have to override the speed limit by what? 15 miles an hour now. Yeah. She travels fast. <laughs> I'm playing. She ain't going that fast. She's actually going 79, just for the record. <laughs> Anyways, I want to read out of Isaiah 14. We're going to... To... Uh, correlate? What does correlate mean? We're going we're gonna to show some similarities between the words of Satan and some of the words of Joseph Smith and, and see if you guys see any similarities here. Kind of interesting. Um, I need my reading glasses. Isaiah 14, starting at verse 11. Your pride and the music of your harps have been brought down to Sheol. Maggots are spread out as your bed beneath you and worms are your covering. That's what happened to the devil. You have fallen from heaven, you star of the morning, sun of the dawn. You have been cut down to the earth, you who defeated the nations. But you said in your heart, this is, this is what Satan is saying in his heart right here. I will rise my throne above the stars of God and I will sit on the mount of assembly in the recess of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. So pride got in Satan's heart. And I want to read one of Joseph Smith's sermons to you all. This is part of it right here. Quote Joseph Smith preaching. Come on, ye prosecutors, ye false swearers, all hell boil over. Your burning mountains roll down your lava. For I will come out on top at last. I have more to boast of than ever any man had. I am the only man that has ever been able to keep a whole church together since the days of Adam. A large majority of the whole has stood by me. Neither Paul, John, Peter, nor Jesus ever did it. I boast that no man ever did such a work as I. The followers of Jesus ran away from him, but the Latter-day Saints never ran away from me yet. When they can get rid of me, the devil will go also. History of the Church, volume 6, page 408 and 409. That is Mormon literature, okay? They like to call it anti-Mormon literature, but you can buy, this is History of the Mormon Church, written by Mormon prophets, written by Mormon leaders, written by Mormon presidents. This is their history. You go to a Mormon bookstore, Deseret Book, you can go to Siegel, Siegel Book in Utah, and they got this set in their bookstore, you guys. So, I don't know, it's a blow mind to me. Kathy and I were reading a little bit of the Mormon destroying angel who was also called Oren Porter Rockwell Brigham Young's destroyer he was a bad guy you know the, the, the state of Missouri be, because of the violence of the Mormon people actually made it illegal for Mormons to, re, to reside in that state they had to get them out of that state in the 1800s it was 1848 or something don't quote me on that year I don't remember exactly Governor Boggs governor of Missouri wouldn't even allow the Mormons in his state and the way the Mormons twist this to their kids as they say it's just persecution but these were Christian men and they didn't want the Mormons in their state and there was reason for it because they were they were molesting little girls taking advantage of little girls you know in the name of prophecy so it's a wicked thing but Oren Porter Rockwell ended up killing that governor and fled to Joseph Smith back up in Nauvoo Illinois and then after Joseph Smith got got killed you know, in the prison because Joseph Smith died in a gunfight, by the way. He was in prison for destroying a printing press that was exposing his polygamy. So Joseph Smith was practicing polygamy, marrying other men's wives, marrying other women, before he came out public with the doctrine. 
but it's heartbreaking what he, we just saw a road that said Emma yeah. Emma Emma Road, which is Joseph Smith's wife's name, Emma Smith. You know, he told her in Doctrine and Covenant section 132 that that if he that if she didn't put up with him sleeping with other women, that God Himself would destroy her. And he put a thus saith the Lord behind him. And that poor lady had to live with that. <laughs> it's heartbreaking, man. Yeah. What a violent. Go ahead. What a what's so hard for me to believe or what just blows your mind is that what you learn about the history of the LDS church and how Mormons came to be and everything that they did back then and believed in and the murders and the uh, adultery and the just the fake visions and stuff like that and yet have a whole Mormon culture and they and it's like if you I mean if you go back to their history and they can read that and, and still believe that this guy was a prophet you know I mean it's a blow mine and they stand up for it and now they're and now they're trying to say that they're um, Christian it's just I don't know it's just it's frustrating. And the, the large majority of the whole are just, you know, comforting Mormons, letting people believe that, that Mormons are, are Christians. You know, it's, it's it's imperative that you draw a line in the sand, you know. I'm thoroughly convinced Christians could open that Salt Lake Valley right up if they just went out there yeah. and exposed the truth. But rather than doing that, they're going out there and shaking their hands and we just love you, brother. And they, they won't bring up anything contentious, you know. Yeah. And it, it's heartbreaking. But yeah, Oren Porter Rockwell followed Brigham Young out here. He was a wanted man. He did eight months in jail but they, for, for murdering the governor of Missouri. But they didn't have enough evidence to prove it was him. But they're all pretty confident that it was Oren Porter Rockwell that, that murdered the governor of Illinois. Mi oh, I'm sorry, Missouri. And anyways, yeah, he fled back to... Uh, no, he fled back to Joseph Smith oh. in Nauvoo, Illinois. And then Joseph Smith got, got killed in that gunfight because he was in jail for destroying the printing press, which was a Christian printing press that was doing an expose on his polygamy. So Joseph Smith vandalized it and destroyed it. So they took him and they put him in jail. The Mormons teach that Joseph Smith was in jail for persecution, but no, no, no. He was in jail for, for vandalism. And um, he had his brother sneak him in a gun because the mobs were coming to get him because of what he was doing to their daughters and he died in a gunfight. He didn't go as a lamb into the slaughter like he prophesied that he would. And um, so Port, Porter, Port, Oren Porter Rockwell went and shot some of those those men that had Brigham Young brought to, that had Joseph Smith brought to, to justice. And then Brigham Young and Oren Porter Rockwell came to Salt Lake City and set up camp and kind of set up their own government. And he made Oren Porter Rockwell the... The, the, the town marshal, so he was the head of the law, and history records that 24 men died in his hands, and if you look up pictures of Oren Porter Rockwell, it's like you can see darkness on him, man, just a spooky looking guy, man, he looked like the devil himself, but he wouldn't cut his hair because Joseph Smith prophesied to him if he didn't cut his hair, he wouldn't, he wouldn't die by the bullet, so Oren Porter Rockwell didn't dare to cut his hair, you know, I think he, they probably thought it was a Nazarite vow or something, yeah. I don't know. But yeah, crazy stuff, man. Well, there's so much crazy stuff in Mormonism. And, you know, it's like, the the only thing that can ha makes a little bit of sense is that the people that go to the church or their temple or whatever, wards, whatever you call them, and um, they just go in there on Sundays and just listen to their prophet or whatever they're called. And they don't read up on their own history, you know, and that we see that a lot in, um, you know, in our Christian culture as well, too. Yeah. You know, I mean, because people will go into church and sit there and just believe whatever the pastor is telling them one day a week. And, but if you don't pick up and read and study out the history yourself, then you're just, I mean, you're, you're just following people instead of. Word of, word of God, yeah. you know, and it's, it's a blow mind, man, yeah. it's a blow mind, you know, a lot of those Mormons, they, 
don't teach their kids their true history. Yeah. You know, they don't, I mean, I've talked to some Mormon missionaries. I had some come to my home sometime. And I actually, you know, asked them if they knew that Joseph Smith died in a gunfight. And they were blown away. And I believed them. I don't think they were lying till later. But I'll get to there. Let me say the story. They, they didn't believe me. And I happened to have the history of the church six, seven volume set in my library. So I went and grabbed volume six. And I came out and I said, have you guys seen these books? You know, have you heard of President Taylor? They're all, oh, yeah. I go, well, let's read this. So I read it to them. And, um. Uh, they were blown away, and they came back later. I heard later that I that they had told my neighbors that I had manipulated that book and added that in there. Right. So I had to take the kids down to down to the Mormon bookstore, take volume six off of the Mormon bookstore shelf, which is a Mormon book, and read it to them. So they, I mean, they believed me anyways, but I just had to show them just right. to remove all doubt. I didn't want to leave that open lie open. But then they. Then they just went through and lied. Yeah. So the Mormons will openly lie to protect their religion. They think it's okay. Very similar to the Muslims. It's okay to lie if it's for a good cause. You know, when, when we as Christians, we know all liars will have their place in the lake of fire. So it's a blow mind, man. It's a blow mind. I think we just need to tell them. Kathy and I handed out quite a few tracks. A uh, Brigham Young track and a Joseph Smith track that, that showed their true history. And showed the differences between them and Jesus Christ and the Jesus that they teach in the Jesus of the Bible. And um, actually, people were taking it a little better than I thought they would. Yeah. You know, one old lady, she took it and found out what it was and threw it away. She, oh, yeah. She yeah. got after me a little bit. Oh, yeah, she did. But um, it went good. I just tried to calm her down and say, ma'am, I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to talk to you. You know, this is your guys' history. So it blows me away that any any pastor or any Mormon leader would, would call it anti-Mormon literature because it's not anti-Mormon literature. It is Mormon literature. You can get every quote off of a track that I wrote, any quote off of a track that Sandra Tanner wrote, and they come right out of the Mormon bookstore. So it's not anti-Mormon literature. It's just their truth, and they try and cover up truth. And it's a blow mind, and they need to know. They need to know what they're following. And the Mormons are trying to cover up those truths in, in their line of that younger generation. Yeah. And now, I, I mean, the Mormons, I know they're flooding into the city where, where me and Kathy live. It's all over Facebook. They're coming in there. And if I post anything on Brigham Young or Joseph Smith on any of those city pages, they take it off like that. But they'll allow the Mormons to post all their hogwash all day long. I'll try and comment uh, www.utln.org in one of the comments. That's Sandra Tanner's website. If you guys ever want to study this stuff out, I would highly recommend Gerald and Sandra Tanner's website, Utah Lighthouse Ministries. If, if anyone's done more history on, on, on Mormonism than them, I would be surprised. Right. And in just in case you don't know, uh, Sandra Tanner is a direct descendant mm. from Joseph Joseph Brigham Young. Brigham Young. And she grew up Mormon. And she was deep into the Mormon church. You know, like, very strongly. Until she started, you know, having some concerns and questions. She just wanted truth. Yeah. And once she started asking, they wouldn't, um, that they kept beating around the bush and they really wouldn't tell her. So that made her more suspicious. So she just started deep in it, digging into the history and started reading digging into the Bible and you know she became born again and realized that Mormonism and Joseph Smith and Brigham Young were false prophets so her whole her and her whole husband's passion was to reveal the truth about Mormonism and hoping that people would you know have their eyes open and really look to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ because Jesus is the truth you know there's so many religions out there that, that try to try and make Jesus, and you know, you ever notice that every single religion that is out there has a form of belief of Jesus, but always changing who he is, but Jesus is the one name that is mentioned in every single, as far as I believe, religion. You don't have Muhammad or Joseph Smith and Buddha or whoever all the other Jehovah Witnesses. Jehovah Witnesses. 
all in, you know, everybody else's religion, but Jesus Christ is in everybody's religion. They just change who he is. Think about that. Yeah, they, they change the way. But Jesus said, I am the way. Yes. Yeah, powerful stuff. Yeah. Preach, baby. I do. <laughs> yeah. It's a blow my mind. Uh -huh. It's a, yeah, Gerald and Sandra Tanner, some of my heroes of the faith for sure, man. They lit that valley up. They didn't have an easy ministry. Right. I mean, but they did it and they stayed. They had a passion for truth, man, and they did it. They fought a good fight, devoted their whole life to it, man. Yeah. And they, had a, they had a love and a passion for for the Mormons because Mormons, when, I mean, when they, they believe what they believe, and, you know, they're passionate about what they believe and what they have been taught and how they have been raised in it. And they're also taught that if you even, you know, go to doubt one bit that you're in real trouble and to go into, they call it outer darkness, right? Am I saying all this right? Yeah. I think, I think what you're saying is true. I think if they even doubt it, their fear, they get, they get afraid. So it's, it's, that's like the, it's almost like a spiritual captivity. You know, they're afraid to think, you yeah. know, and that keeps them captive, you yeah. know. And so it's sad, isn't it? a lot of times when I witness to them, I'll tell them that to try and free them up. I'll tell them something like, you know, what pleases God when we seek out truth. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not wrong to seek out truth. You know, that pleases God. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. Tell him Jesus, you know, the Bible says he gives us the spirit of truth, you know. The Bible says we're sanctified by the truth. And I'll go through some truth scriptures and, and just try and let them know it's okay. You know, hey, prove me wrong, bro. You know, where am I wrong here? Get me on track, you know, to get them digging a little bit. But And, you know, you guys pray for people that, um, that start to see what's wrong with the Mormon church. Pray for them that they will find Jesus Christ because we did meet quite a few people out there that used to be Mormon but are no longer Mormon but kind of just given up on a whole religion. You know, and Jesus is a religion. Jesus is God. Jesus is life, you know. And it's a, it's it's sad. They yes, they see the the wrongness of the Mormon religion, but sometimes, you know, when they get out of it it's hard for them to even believe that there is anything real out there because they have been so deep in deception and deceived. Yeah, I'm really... So pray for them. Really glad you brought that up. It's a huge point, actually. Huge. Because we meet a lot of people out there that are just done with religion. And a lot of people out there are mad at the church because they were born and raised in it and then they find out all this yeah. and instead of coming to Christ they fall into literally Satanism or just atheism and they're miserable and um, I mean it's a hard thing to come out of a, a, your family's in it you know and if you're if you're brought up in a strong Mormon family you're going to Boy Scouts you're going to father-son meetings you, you've got a family unit that sticks up for each other you feel safe you got church basketball. It's it's not a bad life in a world's worldly sense. Um, they're by no means Christian. Do not mistake what I'm saying. They're they are by no means Christian. They're full of secular music and lust, and they are not converted. They are not on their way to heaven. Jesus Christ is the only way. We got to remember what a Christian is. What is the definition of a Christian? You know, so many people think Presbyterian or Baptist or Assembly of God. No. Yeah, it's no, a Christian is someone who has been born again, period. That's it. He who has the Spirit of God belongs to God. He who does not have the Spirit of God does not belong to God. Christianity is to be in Christ, to become one with Christ Jesus. We worship Him and, and pray Monday through, you know, Monday through Monday, seven days a week. Yeah. You know, whether you got a job or whatever you're doing, but it ain't like we just go to church once a week and and live like evangelicals in the South the rest of the week. So I'll just throw that little side note in there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you guys. Yeah, look up Warren Porter Rockwell. Look up the, the Mountain Meadow Massacre. Research that stuff. Crazy, crazy history, man. Joseph Smith, he taught the blood atonement. He taught that the blood of Jesus wasn't good enough to wash away certain sins. 
And if you read his sermons on that, on the blood atonement, you can read Brigham Young's sermon on that. And it sure seems like to me he gave an altar call for people to go forward so he could slit their throat, man. What a blow mind. Jesus said if a blind man falls a blind man, they both fall into the pit, man. I can't imagine. Those that did that went forward. Okay, yeah, I committed adultery. I want to make, you know, I don't want to go to hell. Go ahead and slit my throat. And then they die and go to hell. Right. Trusting in their own right. sinful blood. Rather than the, the precious blood of the Lamb. The, the only one that could shed his blood for us. The sinless Lamb of God. They were trusted in their own blood because they followed a false prophet. And people are still following those false prophets today. And while they're not doing those doctrines that they used to do, they're still following a false prophet and they're still on their way to hell. You can have good neighbors. They can be nice people. But apart from Jesus Christ, there is no other way. Nobody's saved by their good works, you guys. Don't be deceived. I've talked to solid Christian friends and I've had them ask me, man, it's, it's kind of hard to believe some of them are going to hell. And you got to remind them of the truth, man. Yeah. Mormons do not teach being born again. I was raised Mormon. I never even heard the term of being born again. Never even heard that term. I know. You know? You need to go sit in front of the bishop and say, I believe Joseph Smith was a true prophet. That's what you have to confess. Yeah. You believe the church, the prophet of the church is true. That's what you confess in Mormonism. You know? And they believe that Jesus is Satan's spirit brother that was created. Yes, yes. They worship Satan's spirit brother. Wow. That, that, that their God is on a planet called Kolob having sex with his wife, creating spirit babies. But and those spirit babies are supposedly us, supposedly but we're on the earth, and if we're good enough, uh, well, not for a woman, but if the man is good enough here on earth, that he's going to, when he dies, he gets to have his own earth. With a bunch of wives. With a bunch of wives. And, and I can decide if you make it or that's not. That's what I was going to say. Honey, if you treat me good, I'll let you in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little bit of control wow. freak there. <laughs> you better treat your husband right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's not funny. Yeah, it's not but funny. I mean, even for the women in Mormonism that's brought up in that, you guys got to think that, you know, we're not making fun of them at all. It's yeah. like we do have a, a deep compassion for them because these little girls get raised and, and in that and they believe that and they, they make sure they drill it in you that you, this is what you have to believe. Yeah. You know, so the poor women in there, you know, thinking, okay, I mean, how do they live with themselves knowing that, or I mean, how does it make them feel knowing that when they die, if your husband says it's okay, you can go to heaven. And then knowing that. But you that, have to share him because he's yeah, going to have a bunch of other wives. he's going to have a whole bunch of other wives. I'm sure the men are telling their wives, but I'll love you more. I'll love you best, babe. I'm just going to have these other 30 wives, you know, but I'm, I like you best. Yeah, just pray for them to be able to come out of it, man. Because that's a strong, strong, strong. It's very demonic. Power over it. There them. is power over it, man. No doubt about it. It's a demonic presence. Man. Yes, they're very, very proud and boostful in it. Yeah. And um, it's hard for them to come out. And we we try for for hours to hand out tracks and to spark conversations as, as gentle as can be. You know, but but we also, you know, we'll, we'll share the truth, no doubt about it. We let them know their history and let them know. Look, man, for these evangelists that just go around saying, Jesus loves you and so do I, do you want to say a prayer with me and then pray for people to get another notch in their belt? If those people ain't repenting, you might get them to pray with you. They're, are they really converted? You're not making co converts. You're making false converts is all you're doing. Yeah, don't and convert you, people when they're sin. Saved really? They haven't done. They haven't changed their lives. They have to know. They have to know. We're called to tell them. And if we think Christianity is a popularity contest, we're going to fall into that false evangelicalism where they just are friends of the world, and we forget that the Scripture says those who are friends of the world are enemies of God. And um, it's it's putting ourselves worried more about our reputation than having a passion to tell these people's God's truth. And never will it make you popular all the time. Go ahead. You know, if there's some people out there that watch our videos that want to that sit there and think that my husband's preaching is kind of harsh and stern and, you know, kind of rough, you know. But I'm going to tell you something. 
you know what? My husband has the boldness to get out there and speak the truth in love, you know, to let these people know. Because you had, I mean, you had, Jesus was bold. He knocked over all the tables. Well, all those things he was saying, woe to you. You know, this is not about, you know, like he was saying, you can't just go out there and tell people that they're okay. You know, and it, you have to speak the truth. And it's and, and if anything, it's 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 love if you think about it. It's love for God. Yeah. It's love for truth. And it's love for the people. Because if you're, if you're comforting them on the way to hell so you can be popular, you love self. Yeah. Right? And love is not selfish according to 1 Corinthians 13. Yeah. If we're building ourselves of our own reputation, and, you know, woe unto those who all men speak well of. You yeah. know? Where we love ourselves, so we want all men to speak well of us. Donald Trump would be a great example. Everyone loves that man. Yeah. You know, he's the gay's friends. He's the evangelical's friends. And everybody loves The Mormons love him. Conservatives love him. Patriots love him. He's deceived them all, man. But, you know, if we got passion for God and passion for truth, you know, we'll, we'll hang out with like-minded believers. And, and the rest of it will be a tough ministry. Fun, though, in the spirit of God. Yeah, sure. but you know what, what I love the most about, you know, the ministry being tough is because we're standing for truth and for what the Bible says, you know. And yeah, it could be it could be tough, but you know what? All right. So Kathy did not get cut off. My phone ran out of memory. So for the last 15, 20 minutes, I've been deleting old videos, so I could at least finish this one up. Yeah. But um, anyways, you guys, thanks for watching. Pray for your Mormon neighbors. Witness to them. Share the truth, man. Love God. Love truth. Love your neighbors. Anything else you want to say? No. Bye. Grace and peace.